What's up guys? Uh, my name is Danielle, I am a cosplayer, and I am here to show you how I made my bracers from my Armored Mushu cosplay that I wore to Holiday Metsuri this past year. These, there were four of these. Um, one goes on top here, and then uh, one velcroed to the fabric on the bottom. Uh, so it looked like this. And I used Black Warbla foam and uh, Warbla's Pearly Art Dragon Scales. I just wanted to say a special shout out to Cosplay Supplies for supplying all of the Warbla scales for this cosplay and a sheet of um, XL Black Warbla as well that I used to make these. Um, so I'm going to take you through the process and show you how I did it. So we're going to start with the patterning process for the bracers. Basically this process is where you use paper to mess up as many times as you want to until you get a really nice pattern before you cut the foam. That way you don't mess up your nice high density foam and instead make all of your cuts and mistakes on the piece of paper first and then use it to trace your shape onto foam. So the way that I made my pattern for my bracers for my Mushu costume was I took a really large sheet of 11 by 17 paper and a lot of rulers <laughs> and measuring devices and I measured my arm and then I measured the size of the bracer in the photo. And this is a technique that one of my drawing teachers in college told me. And then you can use the length of the imaginary bracer in the drawing and then the length of your arm to sort of figure out where everything else should end up. And I like this better than wrapping my arm in saran wrap. <laughs> Well, but you could also do that too. So once I got a, a nice pattern for the small and large portion of the bracer, basically the bracer is a two-tiered object. So we have a smaller shape that's incredibly similar on top of a larger shape. I used the two patterns to cut out four shapes for each arm, and then our foam is ready for detailing. So the next part of the process is putting all of your foam together. Basically when you're working with Warbla, you want some nice foam details ready for when the Warbla goes over the foam. You can do this a couple different ways. You can wait to put the detailing on until after the Warbla is set if you want the details to be really, really defined. I prefer to do all of the foam detailing first and then put the Warbla on over. So that's what I did here. I used the high density foam from SKS Props. Shout out to Steven, he's got a great product. He also makes these foam dowels that you see in the video. They come in three different sizes. These are the 10 millimeter half round foam dowels that I used. Basically, I just grabbed some hot glue and cut these at 45 degree angles and they all matched up pretty nicely. Once all of the dowels are glued to the foam, we are ready to add our warble. Here we have a XL roll of black warbla supplied by Cosplay Supplies and I'm going to be covering the foam bracer pieces that we just made with nothing but black warbla and we're going to be using the sandwich method. So basically I cut out 16 pieces, a front and a back for each of the eight pieces of the bracers that we have and we're going to be heating up the front and the back piece, sandwiching the foam in between the pieces and then cutting off the excess. So that's the sandwich method. There's also a fold over method if you're trying to save warbla which makes sense because it's expensive. You can heat up just the top piece, which you would add a little bit extra to the sides on the top and the bottom. And you heat that up and you would actually just fold it over the piece. The reason why I wasn't doing the fold over method this time was because I really wanted it to look finished and polished and clean. I've had problems in the past with the fold over method. It notoriously, every like well, at least one photographer at the con will catch the shoulder pauldron just right to where you would tell that the underneath wasn't the same texture as the top. Same with a bracer, et cetera, et cetera. So I decided to go full send with the sandwich method this time and grabbed a heat gun and some coffee and got to work. 
All of the excess pieces that I'm cutting off, I saved for later. Warbler scraps are super invaluable to some cool parts of the pieces that you wouldn't expect. So for these bracers, I glued some gems down from All Star Co. It's one of my favorite gem stores on Etsy and with hot glue. And then I used Warbler scraps rolled up just like Play-Doh from back in the day. You heat it up and you roll it into a, a little noodle. <laughs> and then you heat it up, you heat up the warbler and they will stick to each other like I was talking about earlier. So that's how I made the border of the gym. Then it was the fun part, which was the scales. So I am using the Pearly Art Warbler Scales from Cosplay Supplies for this build. Special, special shout out for them for carrying this product. It is invaluable and incredible because I used about a thousand scales for this Mushu costume. And if I would have had to cut out a thousand scales out of Warbla, I think my brain would have exploded. So <laughs> this product is really cool. It's also made out of Warbla. It's not black Warbla, it's pearly Warbla. It heats up faster. It's a little bit less sticky, but it does stick. Um, you just have to get it a little bit hotter. I noticed it's very smooth the pearly art compared to the black. Basically, the warbler sticks to warbler, like I've been preaching, so you heat the pearly art scales up with a heat gun, heat up the piece, stick them together, you're ready to go. Rinse and repeat until all of the scales are on the bracers, one by one. A method that I actually realized after doing a few of the bracers is that rather than heating up the entire scale, just heating up the top instead of the bottom really made the scales lay nice and flat as opposed to them being too hot and too bendy and actually taking the shape of the scales below them. Just heating up the top prevented them from doing that and made them lay really nice and flat. And last, but certainly not least, my favorite part of any build, which is the painting process. So because of my intense hatred for sanding <laughs> and using sandpaper for literally anything, my go-to method with Warbla, especially black Warbla, which is way smoother than regular Warbla, I just taped these gems off with regular painter's tape and I sprayed each piece about three times with a solid coat of automotive filler primer. You can find this in Lowe's, Home Depot, pretty much any hardware store. It's used to fill in cracks and little holes. So it's perfect for filling in the little indents in Warbla, but not filling in your scratches, which is really cool and important. And about three or four coats will make it to where you don't ever have to sand. <laughs> but it's important that each coat dries really thoroughly before you apply the next one, or you'll get a really tacky, gross product. Once that's done, I personally have a weird habit, I don't know why, of spraying each piece a matte black before I apply any paint to it. I have gotten in this habit for years. I don't know if it actually does anything or not, but in my brain, the colors are way more vivid, so I do it every time anyway. And then I sprayed where the gold on the bracers should have been. And then I taped off the gold to spray the red on the scales and then on the top piece. And then once that's all dry, which took forever because I live in Florida and the humidity hates spray paint, I went ahead and started with my favorite part of the cosplay process, which is adding shadows and highlights to the pieces. I really wanted this cosplay to look grimy and dirty, which is sort of my armor aesthetic in general. But I really, I, I think all three of us, Mushu, the Cricket, and the Mulan, all sort of had this similar style style that we had in our heads about how the armor would look, which was a little bit, you know, war-torn, war a little damaged. We didn't want it to look pristine and pretty, but we also kind of wanted it to look a little bit more grungy than normal, you know, being in war and everything. So we went pretty heavy on the shadows with black paint. I used black acrylic that I watered down a little bit to mimic oil paints. Oil paints are my favorite way to paint, but unfortunately I ran out of time. Thank you, Con Crunch. I had to go ahead and do a little bit faster method than the oil paints, which take a few days to dry normally. But I also had a paper towel to wipe off the excess black. And then the last part of the process is to go in with the white highlights, which is probably my favorite part of painting because it makes everything pop so much better. Also, don't be like me and wear gloves. 
gloves when you paint, but the white definitely helps each scale stand out a little bit more. Usually when I go in with shadows and highlights, my rule is to keep a constant light on and sort of paint where the light hits highlights and then where the natural shadows are, go in with the shadows. But honestly, it's amazing the before and after of a flat piece right next to the black shadows and white highlights. It's really intense, the difference, and I think it makes like a huge, huge, huge pop. have yourself a pair of bracers to take on uh, whatever the Huns throw at you. Thank you so much for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, please uh, leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them as fast as humanly possible. If you want more videos, more tutorials, let me know that as well. And as always, if you liked the video, uh, you can give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you later. Bye.